Okay, so we're going to record now. So, um, so like I say, thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking to you about the uh, the new platform from Start, which is for young people with SEND. Um, and today is the launch of schools and colleges. So hopefully everybody on the call is is involved with uh, a school or a college because we're mainly going to be talking to you, but we'll be touching on some other things as well as we as we go through this. Um, the like I say, if you've got a question, drop it in the chat. Um, it's being recorded as well, and we will follow up with email so people will get a chance to feed back to us via email and, and watch the recording and everything like that as we go through. Um, I'll just give you a quick sort of idea of what we're going to go through over the next 40 minutes or so, um, and then we'll get straight into it. So, I'm going to do a little bit on the project background, so where this came from, um, and, and why we've built what we've built. Um, and and how we've gone about that as well and then I'm going to talk around some kind of principles of the platform the way in which it's built the way in which you're going to be able to use it with young people and the way in which you as staff uh, advisors and support workers will be able to engage with the platform as well to support the young people that you're working with um, John's then going to do a platform demonstration and that's going to be the, the, the meat of the, the presentation if you like and the exciting part um, and then not to downplay Louise's part around the school and college onboarding but she'll then say a few words about how you can get access to this what you need to do and how we'll support you to get up and running with the platform as well. Um, at the end, um, we'll say a couple of words about what we want to do in terms of reporting on the platform and where we're up to with that. Um, and then we'll answer your questions. So if you do have those questions, just let us know. Just a quick bit of background as we get started then. Um, so it's been a collaboration between three careers hubs, uh, D22, Lancashire and South Yorkshire, of which I know many of you, most of you are, are from within these regions. Um, and we've engaged the SEND communities of practice and we've had some phenomenal support and input from uh, enterprise coordinators and special schools as we've gone along on this. So it's a, a real collaborative approach to what we've, we've actually created and the challenge right at the beginning was to create an online solution which could address um, the issues and, 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 and I guess the priorities that you face when trying to support a young person with their future planning whether that's thinking about uh, study choices jobs or that transition into into adulthood um, and but also to be able to provide something where it could be tailored to a local area as well to help a young person to see what's available around them when they're helping to plan for their future as well. So whilst a lot of the platform can, is, is, is sort of common and generic to a lot of the issues faced across the regions that we're working with, we did want something that we could make uh, localised as well. Um, so some of the priorities in, in that challenge that we were set were to make sure that the content and, and the platform was accessible and usable for young people and, and John will touch on some of the things that we've, we've done there. Um, we were trying to address some gaps as well and local labour market kept coming up time and time again from the people that we were speaking to before we developed this about local employers and local routes and local labour market information about jobs and industries so we've tried to include some of that as well and we do have plans to do much more it's probably worth saying at this point that this is the the launch of of the first version and we'll always be improving it as we go in partnership with those same communities of practice and, and schools um, and in the final piece and, and the most important of all um, was the opportunity to actually use this as a way of a student building an online vocational profile a digital profile that collected up their aspirations their interests their thoughts their feelings their plans for the future something that they could then work collaboratively with yourselves on and something that they could contribute to make decisions and input information that are going to help them around these different stages of transitions um, and that brings me on to my next slide, really, just to give you the overview of, of what we've what we've built before John shows you it, just so that you know, certainly the mindset we've been in throughout trying to create this resource for you to use with with your students. Um, and I'll reiterate the point I've just made. It is a collaborative tool. We've approached this as a collaborative tool, something that students can use and absolutely log into and 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 
use the platform in a way that John will show you, but very much with it in mind that they will be supported, either sat with with a teacher or advisor, could be a parent, support, support worker. So we've, we've bird that in mind throughout to make sure that the information available supports all of those audiences to work together to help the student to, to work through the activities and build their profile. Um, Again, we've been thinking first and foremost for use in special schools and proofs, but there are lots of other settings out there where young people will be, including mainstream schools with, with um, SEND classes or a high level of, of students with special educational needs that will want to use this platform. And that's fine. It's open for use by any, uh, by any setting at all. Um, and Louise will tell you uh, the kind of the must do's and what you, you need to do to get set up to be able to use this as well. But this isn't exclusive. It's open to everyone. Um, again, the digital, the vocational profile at the heart of this, the whole idea was to create something that a young person could own and feel proud of and be able to talk about and something they could build and revisit and update throughout their kind of academic journey, if you like, but so that they had information to support different stages of their transition. Um, like I say, whether that's within their school or, or, or into um, some work-based learning or a college or ultimately into, and hopefully for a lot of young people, not all, a job or, or adulthood, wherever that might be. Um, John will talk more about this person-centred approach that we've, we've taken again making sure that there's 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 a role for advisors and, and teachers within this but making sure that the young person's at the heart of, of what it is that we're doing and that they're the ones ultimately making the choices about what their profile says about them and who they are so john will talk more about that um, and I've already touched on the labour market information. So some of the, the activities that young people will do will help them to explore what's local to them um, so that they're able to get a better feel for what's near them, uh, the opportunities and everything, everything around them. Um, and then finally, a point I've made already, um, this can be accessed by anybody. What our intention is, is that it's a setting such as a special school or a pupil referral unit that sets it up and uses it with their students, but it doesn't stop uh, an individual coming along or a parent coming along, registering for themselves, requesting some access and us allowing them to do that. So absolutely can be done that way as well. Um, and then finally from me, just to give you a quick overview of the foundation, if you like, on which we've, we've built this, we've tried to keep it simple. We've tried to think of themes, so about the young person, their education choices and their future planning, which brings in the jobs aspect. And we tried to build around these, these sort of 12 activities um, and these 12 learning outcomes that you can see on the screen. And we've, we've spoken to the same communities of practice about these. We tested them out, made sure that they are outcomes that genuinely matter to you working with young people. And around each one built a, se a separate activity for a student to complete that's going to help them to think through these things and be reflective, make some choices and then capture those in their star profile. And that's what John's going to show you in just a second. And John will touch on this and show you a couple of examples of activities from each one of these, um, just so you get a feel for uh, what it is that we've created and how students are going to engage with, with the platform. So that's probably everything I need to say at this point. Um, John, am I okay to hand over to you? Uh, absolutely, yeah. So thanks, John. Yeah, so kind of just to back up on what, what John was saying is, these pathway activities um, have been created as person-centred, getting to know me set of activities that aim to help that young person think about their future goals and suitability for jobs, work environments and education opportunities. And just like a paper-based vocational profiling, the steps throughout the activities, along with the support of an advisor, aim to help young people understand how their experience, the skills, their abilities, interests, and aspirations and needs relate to jobs and careers that they could consider. So everything leads to the vocational profile, um, which can help support a young person at different stages of their education and their career journey. Now having a full engaging in-depth career guidance session with a young person with SEND can be challenging um, for any careers advisor delivering one-to-one -one careers guidance. Even with all the techniques and the skills an advisor is trained to use, various challenges such as communication, um, an understanding of individual needs can often cause a young person with SEND to feel like they may not have made much progress, especially in one or two careers guidance meetings. And this becomes an even greater challenge 
especially when they're only given 30 to 45 minutes in a good set in a good setting uh, or sometimes less um, where they get the chance to speak to an advisor but an advisor can also be left feeling like they may not have made much impact or progress with that young person and that's not from lack of trying or lack of skills but from the barriers that the young person may present during the session so when it comes to discussing future pathways and goals and jobs and careers in general as a level seven advisor myself and the, and the 12 years experience I've had delivering careers guidance in mainstream schools and SEND schools, um, I would often seek out a resource or, or resources that I could use um, to help prompt those discussions and make them um, more meaningful. And, and, and if I couldn't identify those resources to support me and the young person, um, I would do my best to kind of to create them. Um, after all, we all want a young person to leave a career session feeling inspired enthused excited and confident in achieving their future goals um, and that's one of the main steering points in the creation of the activities so john if you can move on to the next slide what you're seeing here before i start showing you my screen and, and all the activities is a landing a, the landing page which a student once they've logged in would see and this is before they've started completing any of the activities so what you see is a blank profile and this is where the send user would start um, I've included this as a screenshot because the demo I'm going to walk through will present a completed profile. Um, but as you can see, the page it, it's clear, it's clean, it's simple, and what, and what you see is what you get. Um, as, as John highlighted previously around the three main themes, um, the activities are built around About Me. Um, they be um, education and future planning. About Me focuses and helps around the, the young person understand the things that they enjoy, their values, what they can do independently, and what support needs they have. Education is an opportunity to explore options and to identify goals to achieve throughout their education journey and the future planning um, is designed to help explore and prompt discussions about jobs related to subjects, interests, skills and industries and is an opportunity to explore local regionalised labour market information that are there, that's there to help provide that inspiration and raise the aspirations with those with SEND. And again, w w anything that's on here, we, we want to raise those aspirations. We don't want to limit our young people that we're working with, especially those with SEND. You know, it is being realistic, but also allowing them to see that, you know, they can still approach some of these roles and these, these jobs with employers who are welcoming to the SEND users and the SEND young people. So in a true Blue Peter fashion, um, I'm going to join in, I'm going to show you and launch the a platform and then I will log in. So hang on, just let me get to the, the right screen. And I'm hoping this is going to work. So just give me a thumbs up that you can see my screen. Brilliant. Okay, so this is the, the home page and what you will see, and I just need to make sure that I've got that in the right place. Um, the information on this page is, 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 is strictly just to kind of get people to log in. So you've got an area for students, you've got an area for, for the teacher, you've got the area for the adults, parents and carers. And you will notice there's, there's text on here, which is great. This is kind of get the people into it and, and sort of give the overview. You'll also notice a little blue man here, which I'll start exploring in a little bit more detail into the activity. Um, but let's go in as a user. Let's kind of experience what they would, would see once they go in. So we log in. We go straight to the area. We've got a user here, and we log in, and you will be presented with a complete profile. He says as it loads. So, what you see again is a snapshot. It's um, the information captured provides an, an overview of the young person, their education, their future planning options, and the results from each of the activities will be summarised here. Um, and when all activities have been completed. This is what the young person, the teacher, or the advisor, or anybody in their support network will see. Um, it provides a picture of not only what jobs they could consider, but also a young person's interests, hobbies, support needs, educational achievements and goals, which in turn, again, helps that provider and anybody who's supporting them provide that bespoke guidance that an individual requires when considering their options and their future, their future goals. Um, the results allow anyone in a young person's support network to understand that person at a glance so when they're all completed um, a young person if they've never met the person for the first time and think i need to i want to tell them everything that i've ever that i've got and what i'm interested in and what i want to do this is a perfect opportunity it's a perfect profile um, that gives an, a, a window in um, and it continues a, a young person once they've completed this can take this beyond school so they can continually add to it and they can continually revisit it. So it's great and it enables that young person to have that meaningful encounter. So 
a, a straightforward point. We go into the three areas. I'm going to show you the About Me section and, and I'll show you a, a couple more as well. Um, when the user clicks on View Activities, this then goes into those four quadrants that we saw, those four activities that build up that part of that profile. So I think we're going to have a look at the, the first one here. This is what I enjoy. It's also worth bearing in mind that the, the four, the four steps, theme kind of it approaches all the way through it's it's it, it's ingrained throughout all the activities step one tends to be the point where we're informing the young person about what is involved in this activity and what it's going to be the step two involves a bit of exploring step three enables the young person and the advisor to have um, an opportunity to review and reflect and the step four point is where they'll be able to capture and identify the information that they want to present here so because obviously the young person um, or the, the, the demo being me has completed these activities. This is where you're seeing these results here on the screen. Um, but when they've not done them and they click onto this point, they will see um, a detailed description about what is involved in that in that activity. So they know, right, I'm going to get cracking and get, and get stuck into that. So let's go into the first one. Now we've kept it so there's not too much information on the page. And again, feedback would be massively welcome in terms of whether there's too much wording in the sentences and if there's other, other ways that we can approach this, we'd be welcome to take that feedback on board. Um, but what we've tried to do is to get the hook in, get, the, get them interested. And again, you'll have the advisor and support worker working with them, but it's an opportunity then to explore what, what is this, what do I enjoy? And that involves things like hobbies and, and things that are interested in. So I've tried to bring this into to something that they can relate with. I've got a little cartoon video there of Olaf from Frozen, um, where he is doing a video, well, he's, he's, he's doing a hobby, which involves conkers. Now, I'm not gonna play the video because it'll, it'll take two minutes to play through, but it's, it's quite effective. Um, and it's, you, it provides an overview of that sense of achievement. Um, and that's what we want the young person to feel like they might be doing a hobby and they might not even recognize that as something that that can do um, or is related to their future um, or something they can transfer or, con or, or consider. Now, the, the bit at the bottom here where we capture their hobbies, again, it's, it's trying to scratch the surface of what that person enjoys. So we've got what my favorite sport is. They can put in anything in here. I'm not a massive sport fan, but I'll put football. Um, you can put things in like music. I mean, I, I like my rock music. Um, favorite subject, art, and and so on. And they can be just they can they can write as much as they want. They can write specific ones. We're gonna add John, um, and they can add more things in the hobbies. Now, obviously, once the advisor has worked through each this this first step, um, this would be a perfect jumping off point right here to have that discussion about. You know what is it that you really like about these activities tell us more what what is linked what, what jobs do you think then are linked and it's not to get them or to quiz them it's to get them to start thinking or for you to start understanding what do they know and it could be that you are faced with blanks and that there's nothing coming out from that which is why the next step will help prompt that out um so how have your interests and hobbies helped you develop skills and it's a perfect opportunity um, as, as an advisor to be able to start talking about the skills that apply to some of those hobbies that they, that they do, which a young person might not have even considered whether they're send or not. So next step two is where we start capturing the, a, a, a various range of yes and no's. Now, we've tried to capture as many activities or hobbies that you can do on here. Um, and what all we're asking a young person to do is to identify whether they enjoy or whether they enjoy doing any of these following activities. It could be that they don't do any of them, um, but we want to know what what is that? What is there any other underlying issues? Why they've decided they don't want to do those issues, th those those activities? Um, and also, just to bear in mind, you will see that we've got some yes and no's, and we've got them in green and red. Um, and there's various bits of feedback in terms of why that's green and red. Um, but again, comments and feedback on on how that is presented would be welcome. Um, We've chosen green and red because obviously the young person is already identifying that they like this and that they um, dislike it. So I'm, I've selected because I've obviously I've gone through this, but I'm going to go through it with some yes and no. So you can see what happens on the next step, because, again, it's all about if you've got a young person who's finding it difficult to communicate, you're still trying to break the ice with that young person, build that rapport with them. Um, this is a great starting point. So we could go through it. You could spend 
I could, I don't know, you could probably spend about a minute longer on each activity explaining to that young person what it is. They might get to wonder, well, what is that? What, I don't know what arts and craft, what is it? And then you're trying to explain, well, that could involve making things like, I don't know, paper mache things, cutting out activities, doing drawing and things. And it still is a discussion point around that. But anyway, so let's, I, I like my swimming. I don't like fishing. I'm not sure about the sailing. I do love my crafts. Um, I'm just going to fly through these. I don't want to give you a careers guidance appointment whilst we're on the, on the webinar, um, but here we go. I'm a rubbish dancer. Can't play football. Um, don't mind my bit. I like this. Mm. Basketball, listen to music, playing board games, engineering. And the idea is it's trying to filter down and create shortlists, which again, enables somebody to have that discussion. Um, and you could, I've said this before, you could spend however long you feel with that young person trying to get it out. The great thing is, if a young person doesn't want to talk, they can even point to that. And you've got a perfect opportunity to say, what about this? And you know, I've had that in my own situation when I've worked with a young person where they don't want to talk. And it's like, as soon as you show them a picture, they're like, yeah, I'll have that. And it's like, really, okay, we'll, we'll add it on. So let's go through them and then we'll show you what we've got. I've got a cat, not a dog. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. So next step three, this is the bit where we're gonna to start to drill down a bit more. Um, and you will be presented with the results of the yes and the no. And what we're gonna start with is the positives first, which is what does that young person enjoy? What is it that they really like about this? And you can see here, it's already filtered out all the yeses into one area. Now again, you can spend however long you want on each bit or just as a whole and try and find and discuss those common themes that it is that the, the young person likes. And it could be that they, looking at it, they like practical skills, they like the creativity side of things, they like going out, they like meeting people, or it, yeah, and, and that could be something that they capture in this point here, which I've already pre-filled it. I've said I enjoy doing these activities because I enjoy being practical and making use of my creativity. Now, this is a free text box. So again, they can capture as much as they want in there. And the reason that is a free text box is so that the young person and the advisor has a point to revisit when they're starting to create an action plan that moves that young person forward in their, their transition and their career journeys or education and future planning journeys. Um, again, we have the bits which say what it is that you don't like, why don't you like these activities? And it could be simple, that they've just never tried them before. Um, again, that opens up another conversation as to, well, why haven't you tried them? What is it that's, that's stopped you trying them? Um, and there could be a number of different conversations and outcomes from that. Um, on here, I've just resulted and said, I'm, I know that I'm not very good at them. Um, and I find some of those activities quite dull, um, which that's great. I mean, you never know, the young person might revisit this. And again, these activities are not a, once you've done it, that is it. It's a case that they can come back with the advisor in the, if they're doing a follow-up appointment, or I would like to think more than two or three follow-up appointments, um, where they're revisiting and thinking, do you know what, last time I, I spoke to you, I had, had no hobbies, but I've picked up dancing or I've started to do, I've started to join a football team and it started to teach me teamwork and, and leadership skills and, and creativity and all those things that build up a young person. So on to the final step. And it's keeping it simple so you've got those four steps we don't want to overwhelm a young person and again going back to my comment about um the time that a young person has with an advisor um this this will be the exploring point so it's it's probably about the good 15 minutes or 20 minutes of that appointment that you have with them um so we're asking the young person to capture five of those things that they really want to they want to shout about that they would love anybody that I've never met before to, to capture on that profile that I showed you at the front. So I've put in there watching TV, listening to music. Now I'm going to change them because obviously I've put these now, I want to say playing music or playing an instrument. Now I've also mentioned um, at the top here, because there's quite a lot in that in, uh, interest list that I like, I might struggle to remember that. And also as an advisor, even as the young person, you might think, oh, what did we put? So you can click here and it takes you straight back to that step. And it's right at the point where you can write, we'll make some notes and we'll go back to that step there. Um, and it's all good for making sure that you're not going to miss anything for those top fives. So we've got, listen, I've got playing an instrument. I said dancing, didn't I? I think I put that as, as not. See, this is the thing. So I said not. Um, I like my swimming, I like watching TV, I like my rugby. Yes. Okay, so back. 
And really, what I'm doing this is so that you can see that it updates on that front page. Um, watching TV. Okay. And again, there's an opportunity to expand further. And um, it might be that they want to add the ones that they haven't put in their top five in, in here. So you can, you're not missing those, those levels of interest that they've got. So that's done. Um, now, I, I do want to show you this part here, but I'm going to show you the profile and we'll jump back onto this, onto my, the, the little blue widget here. But when we go to my profile, you'll see that this is all start to pull through, which is great because again, that young person's like, right, that's done. I can see that there. The percentage bars at the top are telling me that I'm, I'm starting to complete my profile. You'll have noticed when we go into the view activities part that each one has got a, a percentage bar. Um, and depending on how many of those five activities or those five things that we've asked them to capture uh, have been completed, that will constitute, that will result in the, the full 100% or the 8% or so on. If they've only put in three, then it's going to show the percentage to reflect how many that they've put in there. But it's good because it allows a young person to see um, just how much um, has been completed on there. Now, I've jumped back into the activity so I can show you um, this bl the blue widget which we've spent some time on. Now, this is a great little tool because it enables an app and provides even more accessibility for, for students with various SEND um, requirements and needs. Um, you can see there they've got different things to do, so we're not just firing up that they're expected to see a certain text. Um, it might be, look, I don't like that contrast or I need to see things that are bigger and highlight. So I'm going to show you what this does. Now, um, if I change the contrast, you can see it flips it, which can be good for different types of users, different needs. Um, you can have different text colors on different backgrounds, um, or you can stand for this, keep with the light contrast um, or none at all. Highlighting links will take you through to areas where there's a link, so at the bottom there, you know then, right, I need to click on that, it's gonna take me through, and so on. It's, and it's, it's quite clever if we go back there because it's still active, and um, we turn that off. If I want bigger text, you can see it gives it bigger and makes it much larger for me to see, which is brilliant. And the text spacing can make it easy depending on, on, on readability. And um, it's also worth noting in here that these are all, all these activities have been adapted to fit or to work with screen readers. So any of the videos that we've got, um, and, and the images, they've got alt tags in them that does, does read that back to the, to the user. Um, any animations, we can pause it. And again, you can put a cursor if that's easy for a young person to use um, or whether they'd want to do these. And I, I love using it. I mean, I, I play around with it quite a lot when I'm, when I'm creating some of these activities. Text alignment, again, they can change it. So I just really wanted to show you that that side, that accessible, accessibility side of it has been addressed with the little user way, blue man widget, as we call it. So. Let me go back to the profile. I need to make sure I've got all these off because I like them when they're off. Reset. And it's as simple as just clicking the reset and it takes them all back to how you want it to be or how you might want it to be. It depends on, on your needs. Um, so if we go back to my profile and steps. In fact, it's easier if I just click my profile at the top. So again, going into the sort of like different areas, if that young person has completed this activity they can do the activity again if they want to reflect on that and do that with that with the advisor or they may think right i'm with the advisor or i'm, I'm on my own i'm working through them and i want to update those those activities or those headlines and all they need to do they can click on this section and that will prompt them then to be able to to complete and update that and they can do that and we, we don't say that that's a quick way to get around the activities because it'd be difficult for anybody um, to start populating the top five now without having to know what the the, the reasons are behind it and what the activity is behind it. So it's quite good in terms of all of these have them. Now, you will have noticed on that first activity, there were images and there were photos, and we've tried our best to make sure that we're keeping in with, with various um, stereotypes and, 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 and making sure that we're being as inclusive as we can. But one of the other things that we did do was make sure that some of the imagery that we've used is, is more sound friendly, especially for those with, um, with, with, on the autistic spectrum, those with um, sort of like deaf and, and, and those who maybe um, struggle with, 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 other, with other areas. So what you'll find in some of these activities, if I jump into one quickly, in fact, it'll be on the other one that I'm gonna show you. So I will show you that. Um, but my point is the images that we've used are quite send friendly in terms of they're, they're soft, they're not bright, they're not high contrasting colors. Um, and they're, 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 they're softer for somebody to understand what that image is. And it's more of a graphic cartoon 
point of 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 tech or of of icon so i'll show you them and it makes more sense of what i'm trying to say um so this i've, I've jumped to the future planning one um just so you can see some of the things that we're doing with the labor market information and trying to inspire our young people with the the opportunities that are available to them so we're going to look at the job industries one here and and why this has got future goals attached to it is because with it being the last activity it wraps it up up nicely it could be that once that young person and the advisor has done most of these activities or all of them in here um, or even before they've even done that they can start capturing some of those goals that they work they want to work towards and, and if they're looking at sort of future planning jobs and things that they want to do they can capture that there um, and i will show you that on, on this activity so without further ado now you'll notice on this one it doesn't have that intro sort of what's an industry because we, we, I've got it where in other parts of the activities, they will be touching on sort of jobs that exist in industries, they exist in work environments and things like that. So what we're wanting to do on here is to, is to ask the young people, um, you know, based on the, the local sort of labour market information and the priority sectors, which ones are you interested in? And we focus these, and because these are the, the priority sectors, these are focused on the ones that are taking place in that, in that, that career hub or in that, that region. So this is, I'm logged in as a Lancashire user. These are the priority sectors that we've got in Lancashire. And we're asking a young person then, you know, do any of these jump out to you? Now it could be that they already know what they are. It could be that throughout their time at school and, and various careers appointments that they've had throughout the pathways activities, they've already started thinking about that. Um, but if not, then we've, we've got an opportunity for them to start exploring this further. So when they click on, one of these links which again we do explain to them they can they can click on this to find out more um it will take them to an existing page that we have already got on start now it's worth bearing in mind that the next phase of our project with the pathways is to start making these more inclusive um to involve a lot of those employers that um, work with send um, young people but also offer those opportunities at the the providers and the colleges and the different pathways so what you'll see um, as this develops going forward um, is imagery will change it'll be more sort of send friendly we'll have a lot of headline information here which is very focused around the right audience who will be re reading this information um, and again a lot of the infographics that will be on here will will be um, compatible with um, screen readers so that they're not going to miss the fact that it's, it's 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 burned into an image it will it will be able to explain it to them um, we want to inspire them with employers so again these employers will be updating we'll have specific pick examples of employers where they demonstrate how they support young people with send into those employment opportunities we want videos on there that will show young people in that work environment working for that employer so raising aspirations and, and giving live examples for those who are working with an advisor to see this further and again some key jobs now although we've got these jobs here and that's not to say that these young people can't do them um, again, we don't want to limit our, our young people who are, who are considering these jobs, but it's just, these will reflect those, well, the, the right careers, or when I say right careers, the realistic careers that a young person with SEND could consider. Um, and, and again, there are the opportunities that will go down to the um, education and those providers. So they will, they will link through um, and it will be more relevant around that. Now, that's with the first step of that activity. When they go back to the activity on this page, they can then, after having read this information, am I interested in it? Do I want to do it? Am I, am I not? And again, the discussions can take place as to why is it, what was it on, on that information that you read that you didn't like or what you really liked, what jumped out to you? And again, we filter it down and we then start using this, this stage to start exploring what it is that the, that the young person likes and why, what jobs were on there. Now, you'll see the difference what I've got on this step is I've, I've asked for a young person or for the advisor with the young person or whoever the support worker to capture some job titles and this is to start having something to work towards because if we've got ideas there that a young person wants to do then it helps working backwards or it helps them identify those educational pathways that then feeds into the education part of the profile um, so again we've got them to review the things that they don't like and when we go into next step three this is where we start going into the things and you will see the images um, about what a young person wants to get out of employment out of a career so what does an ideal job look like and you can see the images here that we've kept are quite icon based but that we've used the, the based on 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 the 
various guides that we've had that tells us exactly what kind of images to you images to use um, i've made sure that they are reflective of that and again it could be that you know, why don't you want to work indoors why do you want to work outdoors and that then has those discussions and links back to those industries because again construction has various different indoors outdoors careers um, so it's all to create a really good discussion point or a good talking point with that young person so that that careers guidance session becomes really meaningful um, and then as we complete this and we go through we then filter and we ask them to review them just like a lot of them because again it's, it's collaborative these activities they're not they're not intended and it's not to say a young person can't do it on their own because they can um, but i would like to think that the young person when they do meet with the advisor the advisor will revisit these and review them with that young person and then what is your dream job so i've put drummer um, and yeah i want to tour the world with it which would have been amazing um, and then again we've got some career goals so short term and long term. Now, there is another point that we're going to look into development where that that will feed into a card, which is almost like the profile page where they can update a short term and long term goal. And when they go through a short term and long term, which will be defined by terms in academic year, um, that will present what they've achieved and what they've completed. So that's a whistle stop tour of everything on on the on the profile with a couple of demos of the activities. I could spend all day going through every single one of them with you explaining them, but we'll be here all night. Um, but for those who do want to explore this further, if you're an advisor thinking, oh, I, I need to see this all again, what I, I can see all these, um, but what is that activity going to do or what does it involve? When you click on all activities, again, young people can do this. They get a nice overview here on this page and they get descript descriptions here about exactly what is involved and they can still access the activity that way so it's an opportunity for them to, to find out more and again they can access various resources on there now what i do want to draw attention to and i did say i've mentioned this is the is the advisor guide obviously because the advisor will be working with the young person we want them to, to to support that young person through the activities our advisor guide which has been created to sort of expand further on, on what the pathways activities are and some of those key things that we want you to be focusing on when you are working through the activities. The great thing that this will have once I open this is it shows you um, exactly what the learning outcomes are from each of those activities. Um, and again, at, depending on how you're delivering these, you could choose whether you're going to do it on the one to one basis, but also whether it might be that you feel I could do this with some small groups. Um, so we have here landing page now you can when you've got the page open you can choose to see the chapters and this can jump you to the relevant point so we go down to the role of the advisor this explains exactly what your role is in that those who are advising you'll you'll know what you're going to be doing with there but what we've asked and what i've pointed out is that points to remember when you're completing those activities and if i zoom in it's got things like you know to the activities seek to discover already existing information. Um, the profile is used as the guide to help provide that inspiration for that young person and use those activities, um, not as a series of tests, but should be look at, looking at generating those ideas and raising those aspirations and, and, and yeah, and career ideas for them to explore further and to consider those different job situations. Um, and yet we do always remind the advisor world to make, ensure that it is remaining person-centered. Um, now, this is where you'll see on the About Me and the Education and My Future Planning, all the different steps. So you can almost, before you get to the appointment or when the young person's, or you're about to meet with the person, you can prepare yourself of, right, what am I going to go through? What am I going to explore? But what we've also done here is provide some prompts that might help you when you're starting to do this activity with the young person. So this first one, like I said, with the, what do I enjoy? It's there to help the young person review their hobbies and interests and start considering what it is that they enjoy about those hobbies and activities. And I've put on there, you know, ask the young person to complete the questions, but before moving on to each step, spend the time discussing those responses. And each one has got something very similar to that to give you some ideas. Um, and again, it's, it's quite useful for you to see exactly what each one involves. Um, and we've got the future planning one here. And again, all have those different learning outcomes and what that young person will be able to achieve or is expected to have once they've finished that activity with the advisor. Um, and then we have the completion side. So advice for the advisors, 
is just kind of just to remind, obviously, to, to, to keep bear in mind the things like social skills, independent travels. There is an activity about, about independence. Um, and those all play a big part in this young person's journey in sort of their careers, education and, and their future planning and, and their transitions. But updating the profile, if I mean, it is quite straightforward to follow once you start practicing it and playing around with it. But then this gives you some reminders. You know, why do you need to capture this information? What's the consequence of not knowing a certain aspect of this young person's life? Um, but it then gives you a prompt of, right, you're in the activity. If I need to do this, what do I click on? And there's some, some guidance notes. Um, on the last page that we have, this is the point where we've got the developing the action plan. And you will develop your own action plans based on the students that you're working with um, and depending on the establishment that you, that you work in. Um, but we've got the, the guide on what to include in there, what, we'd what you'd like to see based on the activities from the pathways. And then we give you a template to use, which that could be uploaded into their student lockers um, it can be captured and downloaded and kept onto your files. Um, but again, we are in the process of developing a digital version of that that sits alongside the, the profile. So let me just come out of that and then I will show you. I feel like I've gone on for ages. I'm going to show you the, the teacher way and how we get into that. So if I log out properly, that's the right page. So we've got the teacher and advisor set up here, or login and set up. So you can click on this and request the setup, um, and then we can select login, and we'll go in as a teacher this time. And this is your page. So what you'll see here as a teacher, you can view all the activities, very similar to what the students would access. You can access the advisor guide, you can download it here. Um, and also, one, as we are currently developing the reports, you'll be able to, you'll be able to access and, and view these here. Now, we have put this here for you to, to click on if you'd like to provide um, some of the feedback about what would be in those reports. But that's the teacher, that's the teacher view. Um, that's currently in, in further development. I've given you a nice little overview of what that, the, those pathway uh, activities involve um, and what the profile looks like. As we've said, we would welcome any feedback on this, any comments, anything that you feel that we could, we could develop further, we're open to that and, and we would look to making any further improvements if we need to. So I think I've talked enough now. Um, I think is it, I'm, I'm throwing it back to, to Louise. Yeah, it's gonna go back to Louise. I'm gonna share my screen again. John, just bear with me if you stop sharing. Um, let me bring this back up. Okay, so hopefully I'm sharing again now. So, but thank you for that, John. Really thorough, really comprehensive view of the platform there, hopefully giving everybody a really good idea of what they're, they're going to have access to. Um, so we're going to tell you now how to get access to that or Louise is anyway in just a couple of uh, in just a couple of minutes and then I've got a final few things to say before we, we kind of wrap things up, answer any questions for, that anybody might have so um without further ado louise just want to say a few words about how everybody can go about getting access yeah of course um so schools and colleges that are interested uh, in using the pathways platform will be directed to the pathways homepage, which you can see here on the screen um, and asked to click on the request setup which uh, is just there marked in that red box there under the title box teachers and advisors um, once the request has been submitted, we'd get you set up and started, but we'll just reiterate uh, to access and use the Pathways platform, all schools and colleges must first request set up through that link that's seen there. Um, and this will apply for both new and existing schools and colleges. So both new and existing need to request set up from us in order to gain the access. So once that access has been request has been submitted, um, our customer support team will switch on the Pathways Send Access and shortly after that a confirmation email will be sent out. This will include a link to the homepage, advisor guide, the Pathways Getting Started guide and for those new schools and colleges that I mentioned um, that have been requesting setup, our onboarding guide will also be included. Additional support will also be available. You can just simply contact us 
via support at you explore um, and assistance will be offered via email or via a 15 minute support call if and where necessary. Okay, thank you very much Louise. So we got the messages there that all schools, even if you've used start before and you've got logins, you need to request uh, your setup and it's a simple thing I guess in the background for us but an important one that we switch on your access to it and if you've never used start before as well just follow the same process request setup um, and Louise and the team will will take it from there um, and then hopefully we'll have lots of you soon up and running using the platform with your students um, we mentioned that and John mentioned as well when he logged in as a, as a teacher into the Pathways platform that there was that little strip there that basically said um, there are, you know, we're, we're taking re feedback requests around reporting. What we want to introduce to the platform is um, the ability for you as a teacher or a support worker or whichever students you're working with um, to be able to see their, their sort of progress through the activities as well. Um, and so we're requesting your sort of feedback on the type of information, the type of uh, reporting and reports that you would like to see um, so that we can start building them as, as soon as the end of June really so we're going to open up that opportunity for you to be able to give us that feedback um, which is on the screen now uh, everything that I'm saying so there'll be plenty of opportunities for you to, to do so so even if you're a new school or an existing school when you want to request access to use this platform with your students and you contact us and you contact Louise Louise will give you an opportunity to, to, to feedback on anything that you, you want to, to see in reports and that won't just be at the beginning but we'll contact you as well kind of throughout the process of you using the platform um, but also we'll share the link um, and I think if, if Louise if you've got it we might as well um, we can pop it in the, the, the chat as well at some point if people want to but um, or we can circulate it after the webinar which I'll do anyway with, with the follow-up email if needs be but we'll, we'll be taking feedback until the end of June um, specifically around reporting so that we can then start to introduce some nice simple reports that allow you to see which students you've got what progress they're making um, but I know lots of you will probably want to use this platform sat with young people so you can see that richness of their profile in front of you whilst they're working on it as well but we do want to provide some reports so that when you're not with the student there's an element of information that you get as well so if you've got ideas and thoughts on that that, you can let us know and we will we'll make sure you get the link to be able to do that in due course um, so before we kind of look if there are any questions or people can can start putting them in the chat in, in a second um, reminder yet yeah, you need to request that setup so pathways.startprofile.com um, if you went there right now you wouldn't be able to do it because it's still promoting this launch webinar that we have but overnight it will be um, that home page will change and you'll have those three boxes that John showed you where you have the student login teachers advisors parents and adults um, and obviously you would go there and under the teachers and advisors you hit that request setup fill in the form and we'd get your request and get you set up as soon as we possibly can but like I say that's that page will change early evening overnight but if it's if you're desperately keen Louise if you have got the form link that you can drop into the chat as well please thank you because if you're really keen the link that Louise is going to put in now um, then that's the form to follow and it will say you know, requesting setup and you just fill it in and we'll get your request and we'll get onto it as soon as we possibly can but if you can wait and you want to wait tomorrow at pathways.startprofile.com that's where you need to go um, and that's where you can request setup and once you're set up that's exactly the same place that you and your students go back to to log in but all of that's included in the onboarding uh, getting started guide if we haven't said it already, I don't think we have. There is no cost to any schools, colleges, or individuals who want to use this platform at all. Um, and that's specifically in the D2N2 Lancashire, South Yorkshire regions because of your careers hubs. Um, and like I say, we want your feedback on reporting, but if you've got general feedback, always email us feedback at startprofile.com. Um, some of the things that John mentioned there in terms of the yes no's the amount of text the way in which we show some things tell us um it's a product that we want to keep developing and adding to so your your voice really matters in all of that and that's probably the key things i wanted to to remind you all of so um 
that brings us to the end. A reminder of the link, um, an opportunity to do some questions and answers. I can't see the chat at the moment, but I'm hoping that Louise and uh, John can. And if there's nothing in there and anybody wants to unmute themselves and maybe ask a question, that's great. If there's anything in there, perfect, we'll answer them. And if not, then we bring it to a close with, with a few minutes to spare. Um, but we're happy. Is there any questions, Louise or John, that you can see? Yeah, there's a question from Mandy Hepworth saying, I currently have START, will Pathways link with this? So you've currently got START, so the same usernames, the same logins and everything will work. Obviously you need to make sure that you've asked us first, request that setup so that Louise can make sure you do have access. Right here, right now, they're two separate products. The thing that connects them is that students can log into both with the same username and password. What we're working towards is, so the profile that they have on the main start platform and the profile that they've got in the SEND platform, at some point we're working on at the moment, those two will, will sync and we'll be able to put those together so that students will be able to see stuff they've done on the main platform and stuff that they're doing in the SEND platform as well. But right here, right now, and treat them as two different setups other than if you've created student accounts already once we've done the setup bit you can use those accounts to log in any others louise nothing more just got some lovely lovely comments ah oh, um will we be sharing the video via an email link afterwards yes so tomorrow morning i will personally share the video link so you can watch it all again if you're looking for punishment on that um so you can watch that again and i will also share just a couple of the links that we've got in there um that we said about feedback about how to request setup and obviously the pathways link will be all up and running then you can go to the home page and request your setup so yeah i will do that tomorrow morning and make sure information goes out to everybody who was registered uh for this webinar no problem i keep seeing the thing move but i can't see your actual comments so i'm relying on you louise if there are any more questions in there they're just yeah they're just lots of lovely comments <laughs> good like wonderful well if there's no more questions coming through and louise is skimming down i can see at the moment Oh yeah, someone just said um, they struggled to decide what the illustration for the art and arts and crafts um, box may be. Something a little bit more basic like scissors, glue and paper. John, can you fix that? I will fix that, yeah. I, there were so many arts and crafts pictures to, to select, like which one? And then I thought, I, I just remembered the time of cutting things out. So I absolutely will change that, yeah. Thank yeah, no, that's the kind of stuff we want. Tell us, tell us, tell us. You know your students best. If there's stuff that you think won't work, tell us, please. We want to make sure that this is fit for purpose. We've done a lot of work on it, and and, and you know, even a public huge well done to, to to the team on here today because they've done a fab fab job getting us this far. But yeah, your 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 feedback will help us to make it. Even little things like that that make a big big difference. Thank you for that. Any more, Louise? No more questions. Oh, uh, hang on, one more. When will this be accessible? Yeah, so sorry, yeah, it will be as of tomorrow, effectively. Um, so once we've updated overnight the homepage, you can hit that request setup. Or even if you want to get going, have you, you've put the link in, Louise, the, the one that says you can request setup have, yeah. in the chat. Fill it in now, and we'll be getting onto things tomorrow to make sure we can start sending out stuff. So it normally takes about 24 hours or so, Louise, to be able to turn around. You've got to get a lot of requests in for a lot of setup and things. So as soon as Louise and the team can get around to replying to you and getting you set up, it's live. Yeah, we'll be um, we'll be starting on on any of the uh, requests that we get through tomorrow, but be running uh, full steam ahead from Monday onwards as well with it. Great stuff. OK, anything else? No, nope, that's They're just comments. Good. It's Excellent. Well, thank you to everybody for your time. I think we'll wrap it up there two minutes ahead of schedule. So thanks for joining us this afternoon Um continue to feedback at startprofile.com if you've got any more questions and we'll get back to you and answer those. But uh, um, have a lovely evening, everybody.